When it debuted in 1973, it sold just 747 units. Time, however, has proved it to be very popular. In fact, it's been so popular, it's Canada's favourite car, and it has been for the last 13 years. On this edition of Test Drive, the ninth generation Honda Civic. The irony here is that in spite of all the improvements that have been made to the new Civic, it could lose that best-selling crown this year. No, not because of the spurious reasons being bandied about by some pundits, but simply because of the tsunami that basically destroyed Japan earlier this year. The disaster is holding up the flow of parts needed at Honda's Alliston, Ontario assembly plant where the Civic is built. Go figure, the competition couldn't knock the Civic off. Mother Nature might just do it. A lot of people have accused Honda of not pushing the stylistic envelope far enough with this new Civic. Well, it does have a fresher face, and these cut lines in the hood do serve to differentiate old from new. But believe it or not, 90% of this car is actually all new. And one of the biggest improvements, right here. This A-pillar has been thinned down appreciably. That and the extra glass bring much better visibility. The underpinnings have been thoroughly reworked. To begin with, the Civic's handling has been sharpened without sacrificing ride quality. The improved body rigidity, which is up 11% dynamically, certainly helps matters. Through the pylons, the Civic bobbed and weaved and only started to slip into understeer as the limit neared. For a family sedan, the handling and response to driver input is more than composed and still class leading. As with the exterior, the interior changes are subtle. The materials are better and there is more content. When you look at the dash, it's the same two-tier configuration. The lower half is the tack and all the warning lights. The upper section, you get the digital speedo and fuel gauge. There is, however, an addition, a five-inch screen that sits over on the right side of the binnacle. Now, it shows Bluetooth and radio status. It also has a trip computer and it gives you any of the warnings. As for the rest of it, well, this is an EXL with navigation. So you get navigation system, power moonroof, leather seats. It comes very nicely equipped and for less than 25 grand. The regular Civic Coupe and Sedan arrive with a 1.8 litre four that pushes 140 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. A five-speed manual is the standard transmission, with a five-speed automatic being optional on all but the EXL tested here. The fuel economy has been improved by 12% and now rates at a miserly 7.2 litres per 100 kilometres in the city. One of the things that's always impressed me about the Civic is the efficiency of the interior. Now, I've got this driver's seat all the way back. There's still some legroom, plenty of headroom. There's enough width for two to sit in comfort and three at a squeeze, primarily because there's no central tunnel. You also get 70-30 split folding rear seats and through there, 11.7 .7 cubic feet of cargo space. The drive of choice, however, is the Civic Si. It is a hoot. The 2.4-litre engine delivers 201 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque, which is a 22% improvement. The power is put to pavement through a close-ratio six-speed manual box, a limited slip differential, and P215 45R17 tires. Likewise, the SI's handling is sharper, and the drive has a more planted feel than the base models. So should Honda have changed the styling a little more? Of course they should, but for the average Civic buyer, I don't think it matters because the bottom line, this is a better car. Tighter handling, much nicer content, and it's far more fuel efficient. And of course, if you're looking for a little driving spice, there's always the Civic Si.